couple things I want to cover this morning. Uh, we already covered exactly what the technology did. Scott did a great job with that, but let me under, let me help you understand for a moment what we're doing. We're going into one of the largest markets in the U.S. healthcare system today, the cancer field. We measure excess fluid in the body that occurs after surgery, chemotherapy, or radiation. Now, why is that important? That excess fluid, if not addressed early, will become a chronic lifelong disease. So our device can detect it early enough. Now, this addressable market for us alone in this space is $1.5 billion or greater. So it's a big, big market for us, but it's one of many markets that we're going to be going into over the coming years. So. What happened in FY15 to really see that uh, spike in the stock? There were several things that occurred. First of all, the American Medical Association gave us a broader descriptor that we could go into many more indications. So first of all, we were going after breast cancer-related lymphedema, and they awarded us all cancer-related lymphedema. Now, that took our addressable market from 230,000 new patients a year to almost a million new patients a year. So again, it's a significant uptick. Our reimbursement rate came in much higher than anybody predicted. Predicted. Everybody was looking for $30 to $40. We came in at $112. So, so physicians and hospitals can seek reimbursement of $112 for every time they do the test for these patients. And over five years, we average about 17 tests. So again, it's significant. The other thing that will occur later on this calendar year is we'll be going into a full commercial launch. So the slide you see in front of you is really our strategy for the upcoming year. And our strategy is very simple. We want to become the standard of care when it comes to detection of excess fluid in cancer patients. We do that quite simply by getting into the NCCN guidelines. The guidelines in the United States, this is the Bible for cancer care. If you get mentioned in this publication, you become standard of care because every major hospital system uses this for the best outcomes for their patients. The way you get into these, you need to have level one clinical evidence in the U.S. and we're currently um, have 300 patients enrolled and we have 1,100 that we're shooting for. So by the end of this, uh, by the end of 2016, we'll have all 1,100 patients enrolled. If you look to the uh, right hand side of that uh, slide, you'll see our post approval timeline. I won't go through that in detail. Just understand that starting late 2016, 16, 2000, early 2017, we'll start out with more than 200 patients will be presenting at several major congresses, and every year thereafter that number will just increase. So for five consecutive years, we will be presenting level one clinical evidence, the highest evidence you can, um, you can obtain in the United States. So our launch plans, you'll see in the bottom right hand corner that we have targeted the 500 leading cancer centers in the United States. So there are thousands of different cancer centers. We've taken careful, careful aim at the top 500, and we have plans in place to go after 50 in 2016, double that footprint in 2017, and then once we see private payers come on board in late 2017, we'll see a rapid acceleration. So very exciting times as we begin, we start to launch that in the coming months. One thing I want to point out before I, we open it up for questions and answers, you saw on Monday we had an announcement. We acquired the assets of Intersection Medical. This was an exciting um, asset purchase for our company. It really helps us uh, cement our place at looking at chronic heart failure. Cancer is a big market for the United States. Chronic heart failure is the single largest market in the United States healthcare system. Last year, the U.S. government, private payers paid, uh, spent $33 billion managing chronic heart failure patients. It is the single biggest problem in the U.S., and it's probably the single biggest problem in the industrialized world. 